How's everybody today? What do you think? We vote it stays like this weather until December 20th. <laughs> yeah, I wish we could vote about that. Uh, just real quick, uh, you see all the work that's going on outside, and one of the things that I'm asking us all to do together is to pray that we're able to get into that space by Easter of 2020. I think it'd be phenomenal for us to have more than enough room for everyone we would invite to connect with God's grace on that day. And so just pray. And uh, there's a lot of things that have to go right and fall into place, and, and I hope that uh, uh, you'll keep us in prayers on that. Also, this coming Tuesday is a really significant night in our church family. And uh, as you know, we're in an expansion project. Some of you might not have heard all of the information about this. You are welcome to join us at 6 p.m. And uh, we actually will have dinner. And we're just going to walk through uh, what our plans are, as well as uh, uh, some of the reason why we're doing what we're doing and the way we're doing it. Now, I know some people might feel like this is uh, kind of like a timeshare sales thing where we get you in the room and then we pressure you. And it's not like that at all. It's informational. We're not receiving any commitments that night. The goal is for you to be informed, and then you'll know how to, to uh, start your own conversation with God about it. At 7 o'clock, we're asking everyone in our church family to join us for a, a, a time of prayer together. We're going to do some uh, uh, prayer together, but we're also going to do some prayer walking through where our facility is now and where it's going. We really think God is going to do some amazing things, so I hope that you can uh, join us for that. Uh, this morning, we're in Matthew, uh, the 14th chapter, and it says, Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And after he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. And shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were, what's the next word? It's a ghost, they said. <laughs> and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Uh, we all have things that we're afraid of. Some are kind of obvious. I think most people are afraid of dying. Lots of people are afraid of germs. Does anybody know a germaphobe? If you're sitting next to one, just rub your hand on them and watch what happens. No, don't do that. And, and then uh, some, some people are afraid of spiders and rats and snakes. Uh, some of us, <laughs> some of you are afraid for me to even say it. Then there's other fears not so obvious, fears of intimacy, fears of loneliness, fear that we will waste our life and not actually make a difference. We all know how to avoid germs and snakes. We don't always know how to avoid loneliness. So I'd like to tell you the story this morning of the closest I ever came to actually walking on water. <laughs> yeah, it's not as good as you think it is. Uh, I was water skiing with friends of mine. We had gone out. We only had one afternoon to do this, and uh, the, the weather was not good. The waves were very choppy, and, and it was not a great day temperature-wise or wave-wise, but we decided this was our opportunity, and we would do it. And because I was with a group of people known uh, not necessarily for uh, the, the level of intelligence we were capable of, we invented games to make it a little more interesting. And the game was to see how quickly you could get the person who was water skiing to fall into the water. 
And so it involved a lot of speed and sharp turns and anything we could do. And it was my turn to ski, and I was staying right in the wake of the boat because you get less waves there. The boat's kind of carving through the water. And they had this boat going as fast as it could, but I wasn't going down. So they began to shout. I wouldn't call it encouragement. It was more of a dare. And, and the language they used towards me was not very flattering, but they told me that I needed to get out from behind the wake. And so I decided I would try that. I don't know how long I lasted. It wasn't very long. And I lost my balance, and I went down. And because of the speed, I actually skipped on the water three times before my body slowly sunk beneath the waves. And uh, they... they brought the boat back around and hauled me inside. I can tell you that for days, every muscle in my body hurt. I can also tell you that skipping across the water is not the same as walking on the water. <laughs> it's a lot different. But I do think there are some incredible lessons about water walking. I think it's worth us taking a couple minutes to walk through that. And the first is obeying Jesus does not eliminate storms. It was actually Jesus who told the disciples to get into the boat to begin with. They were doing what he asked them to do, and yet an incredible storm came up. I think a lot of us work on the assumption that if I do the right things, good things will happen. Or at least if I do the right thing, bad things won't happen. And we kind of try to set ourselves up. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I think it's good to do the good things. But it's not a guarantee that life just gets really easy. And what was interesting is that in the middle of the storm, Jesus came walking to them on the water. Now, they had spent a lot of time with him. They knew him, but they couldn't recognize him in the middle of the storm. And often we don't either. Waves of water are nothing compared to waves of doubt and fear. And when they are against us, it's really hard to see Jesus in the middle of it. He's there. We don't always recognize him. The second uh, a lesson that I think we can learn is growing faith is not about taking unnecessary risks. It is about necessary obedience. A lot of times when we talk about faith, we just imagine that we're going to do something that's very high risk and that God somehow will be obligated to fix whatever hole we create or challenge that we produce. I don't think that's what faith is. Peter did not just dive over the side out of the boat into the bleak of night in the midst of a storm and, and, and just to see what would happen. He actually did a very interesting thing. He told Jesus, he said, if that's really you, ask me to come to you. That's a really intriguing way to think about it. And I think a lot of times Jesus actually calls us to go to him. We would prefer he just get in the boat with us. Sit next to me in my seat and make me feel better about what it is that I'm facing and going through. Just stop the storm. And I think most of us assume if the winds and the waves on the outside stop, then the winds and the waves on the inside will stop too. And that's not a given. A lot of us have seasons in life when it's not that high of a challenge, and yet internally, we're on alert. It's just not going the way we thought it would. So if you want to actually be with Jesus, sometimes that requires that you give up your seat on the boat and you step outside. And I think that something inside of us intuitively knows we are made for something more than just a sightseeing boat tour. We were created for something more than that. We were destined for something more than that. The, the challenge is, is that our tendency is to want to stay dry, and maybe staying dry is just another way of saying I won't try. I'm not going to get out of the boat. Uh, we all go through seasons in life where we're not very happy about where we are. That's, that's one of the things that makes this not heaven. And in those seasons of high challenge or high demand, we will tend to lay hold of the things that makes us feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more safe. It's what we do. And so I wonder what our boat might be called this morning that we cling to. And, and you might be sitting there going, oh, one boat. I have a whole fleet of boats that I 
cling to. And I, th I think that's probably true for a lot of us. I, I also think that, you know, it seems to me as though that walking on water, even when it's calm, seems not possible. But when Peter steps out, it's not like everything went calm. The wind is still blowing. The waves are still crashing against the sides. This is a, this is a very interesting time to try to walk on water. So how do you walk on, on waves that are actually moving and rising and falling? And I think that what we have to assume is that when we start taking steps of faith, it doesn't always get really easy. Things don't always smooth out. And sometimes we, we misinterpret that as though we're getting something wrong. I honestly believe that we cannot become who God created us to be or to do what God has called us to do if all we do is stay in our assigned seat on our boat. It doesn't really work out. So what is it that you depend on? What, what is it that you cling to? What makes you feel safe and secure? And is there ever a reason you would ever consider relaxing your grip on that to increase your grip on him. So, uh, last lesson I want to talk about this morning is that water workers actually redefine failure. Water walkers redefine failure. It's really easy to look at Peter coming back from this little water walking expedition all soggy and having to been pulled out of the water and dragged back to the boat and heaved over the side. And, and it's true, Peter got distracted and he became afraid. And it's also true that he went underwater and had to be rescued. But he is the only one in the boat that day that had any kind of an experience of what it's like to actually walk on water. We look at him and call him a failure. But there were a lot of other people in the boat that day that were also failures. It's just that their failures were quiet and they were secret. They were safe. For the rest of their lives, they would be able to tell the story about how Peter took a few steps and then went under. But they would never be able to tell the story about what it was like to walk on water for themselves. I mean, I know how much fun I have telling the story about the time I skipped across the water. Just imagine Peter when you bring that up. I think he could be a pretty old guy sitting around a fire talking to his friends and say, let me tell you a funny story that happened to me. That's the thing. It happened to me. It's not just the stuff we watch. It's not just what we see. It's what we engage in. I'm not sure how he got out of the boat. If, if he'd been like me, he probably got out of the boat. I'd, I'd had most of my weight in just seeing, <laughs> you know, if, if it would hold me up underneath. But eventually he walked out. So when do you feel was the last time that you heard the command of Christ to let go of something and walk towards him? When was the last time you really felt like you took a real step of faith? And I think... The concept of taking steps of faith or this idea of, of walking on water requires a certain kind of exercise. How many have heard of exercise? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying if you do it, but you heard about it. And the thing about, the thing about that kind of exercise, it's, it's not a one-time decision. Walking on water, I think, takes a different set of muscles than we use in everyday life. You know this, if you get in shape, you have to do things you're not used to doing. And then over time, your body starts to begin to change, become stronger, and you grow in your stamina. And because you're doing something you don't usually do. I, I think that happens in our faith journey, too. It, it's not just a one-time thing. It's an ongoing journey. I know about a year ago, um, our church family decided to, to start praying really bold prayers. We were in a boat, and it was a good boat. And we started to ask God if there was somewhere he wanted us to go other than just sitting. And we sensed that his heart was not just for us, but for anyone in our community who wanted to experience grace. And so we started praying really bold prayers, and we felt like God was calling us to do something really significant. And I can tell you that, that that's a challenging thing to work through, to think through. And we could have said this, as soon, Father, we promise, 
as soon as someone gives a million dollars, we will build that facility. Is that walking on water or is that just changing boats? And so we decided we, we weren't sure whether we could raise enough money. But we were willing to try. In fact, we committed as a church family to taking 36 steps once a month. We would let go of resources that we had worked hard to gain. And we were willing to see what God could do in 36 steps. And, and maybe you weren't around then, or maybe you weren't able then. I have good news for you. There's still 24 steps you can take. You can get a long way on water in 24 steps. And it's amazing what kind of faith muscles can be built in that number of steps. I know we struggle to wonder. I do. If what I let go of, God can actually make a difference with. Because it doesn't seem sometimes like it makes that big a difference in my life. But there's just something about that release that God begins to multiply and bless. And we get to observe a miracle, but we also get to participate in it. So here's what will happen, Lord willing. Uh, we'll move into a new space, and there'll be people who've had various steps of faith to help us get there. And then someone who didn't contribute anything towards this at all is going to walk into that room. And their heart is going to be somewhat warmed by just the love and hospitality they sense from other people around them. And possibly their heart and their mind will be inspired by hearing God's thoughts towards them when God's word is taught. And there could come a moment when they make a decision to no longer trust their incomplete efforts for God and begin to trust his complete effort for them in the cross of Christ. And that's when they start stepping out of their boat. And here's what I know, is that when you have done a little of that water walking yourself, when that happens, it feels very, very differently than when you just see that it happened. But there's something about that step of faith that we take for ourselves that actually helps us see something differently and feel something differently. It, it's very easy, it's very easy to think everything that God blesses is just easy in life. But let me tell you this, if easy were the way to go, there would have been no cross. It wasn't easy for Jesus to come. It wasn't easy for Jesus to endure crucifixion. It wasn't easy for Jesus to raise from the dead. God isn't looking for easy. He's looking for faith. And faith is what makes the difference in our world. So, we'll always have a reason to stay in the boat. I've got lots of them. We'll always have a reason not to take a step of faith. What honest conversation might God be encouraging you to take, to start, or to continue? It's just so easy to stay in the boat. Or what sacrificial gift might he be calling you to make? Or what dream might he be calling you to pursue. And it's going to feel, well, it's going to feel scary. That's just true. But I know this. Every one of us struggle with trust and fear inside of our heart, and one of those things are going to rule us. And the only way I know for trust to gain in its capacity to influence my life is to take some steps of faith along the way. Now, if, if we give in to the fear thing, we'll misunderstand ourselves a lot. You'll always think less of yourself than God does. That's a guarantee. I can also tell you that you'll also misplace your future. There's just lots of options you'll never consider, you'll never move towards, you'll never exercise. Because when you think that little of yourself, you just won't try very much. Uh, to, to actually take a step, that changes your future. And we miss out on joy, too. We not only misunderstand who we are, and we misplace where God wanted to bring us, but we can miss out on joy. There are things that, that don't turn out the way we wanted, and we can be frustrated with ourselves. But here's what I want you to know. This is not a guarantee you don't get wet. But I do think Peter smiled every time he told the story. 
I, I wonder what he thought about the other guys who just watched his experience. And I wonder what they thought about him, themselves. You see, I like telling the story of skipping across the lake because for a brief stupid moment, <laughs> I felt brave. I really did. And I survived it. And I do have a story to tell. And I think that's what God wants in our lives. He's not guaranteeing that everything we try works. He's telling us that there's a lot more to you than you had any idea. And that something knocking you down or wearing you down is not the same thing as redefining you. You are not a fearful person who is stuck in a boat. You are a person who's willing to put a leg over the side and see where God will, take, will call you and take you. So... Um, I also think that we're surrounded by people who would dearly love to see a few water walkers in their lives. I think you probably have a spouse or a friend or a family member or a co-worker that would love to see someone who isn't just dominated by fear all the time. And maybe today is the day you start doing a little water walking yourself. In, in just a few minutes, we're, we're going to have... Uh, a, a season when we kind of go out and we, we take promises of God. And if you have one that's meaningful to you, you can write it down on the concrete outside. That's going to be a great moment. If, if you didn't bring one with you, we have a list there, there at the bottom of my notes. Maybe one of those will stand out to you and you can do it. But th this is what I know. I'm pretty sure that God has called us to more than just play it safe. Sit really still. And hope we get through it. I think the world needs to see a few water walkers. And I'm willing to get wet. And I'm hoping you're willing to get wet with me. All right, let's bow our heads. Uh, Father, There doesn't seem to be a shortage of people who bring up the mistakes we made in the past and remind us of how we could have done better or different. And a few of those experiences will, well, they can start defining us and limiting our options. Would you help us today to hear a different voice than the ones that come from the people outside of us or even the one that comes from inside of us, would you help us hear your voice in the midst of even storms and darkness? Hear you say, it is I. Come to me. But that's where life starts making a really big difference. We thank you for that in Jesus' name.